Hello, everyone. Maybe you can hear me. Hopefully you can hear me. The stream has, um, the stream is behind. So we'll just wait for that, I suppose. And then it will kick off. I have done nothing in preparation for this. I've got the day off work today and I thought I would spend some time doing this because I, I talked about it during the week on Twitter. The, uh, the whole, um, the whole actions thing. So Pavilus put out a, uh, an article on Laravel news the other week talking about refactoring controllers and some different approaches that you can take, whether that's dispatching events or dispatching queued jobs or, um, you know, any of that kind of stuff. One of, one of the things that he talked about there was using actions. And that's something that I've used a little bit in the past. It's a nice paradigm that allows you to kind of separate each of the individual pieces of your of your uh, of your request into discrete testable classes. Um, it, it's just one approach. It's it's one that I've found to be quite nice. And in in my work, I work for a a fintech company, and what we do is asset finance. But we kind of do the in between between lenders and brokers, and so there's some tooling and some um, specifications around the transfer of financial application data between lenders and brokers and things like that. And it's this massive document. It's like a 60,000 line JSON schema. And we need to take that as a whole package and then we need to ingest it, process it, um, normalize the fields, take all the data, convert it into our data structures. And then ultimately, once we have the, the structures in place, we need to then uh, create eloquent models. Like at the end of the day, that's what we're doing. We're, we're creating a whole bunch of models, but we need to create an application and we need to create a loan and we need to create um, applicant records. So people, we need to set addresses and all this, and we have to kind of link it all up. And so we, we have this thing where we've got a giant object and sometimes some of the linking data can be three, four levels, levels deep. So you'd have like an applicant, which belongs to a household, which, um, which then has like some other thing. And so three levels down, they've got an ID that we need to get. We need to kind of massage all that data around. And so you can see how doing all this in a controller is going to be just unwieldy. Like it, it's not going to be possible to, to manage that. It's not going to be possible to, to sort of really deal with that in a nice way. Um, and so what we needed to do was to kind of separate that where we could ensure that all of the individual bits under the hood were working. But, and, and then at the end of the day, like our feature test, all it needs to do is make assertions around counts of records. So, um, you know, we know that we have a application and from this package of data that we get, we, we, I say package, it's just like they call it a package, it's just a JSON payload. Um, so we know that we have one applicant, which means that we need to have one person resource. And then that person has two different types of income and then you know, all of this kind of stuff, building the financial model for that applicant and for that application and everything links to an application. So at the end of it, we have one application record. We have one applicant or one person record. We have two income records that link to both the application and the person. And so our high level feature test literally eager loads all of those counts um, and just makes assertions like given this um, fixture data, that has one applicant, two incomes, whatever, that we've created the corresponding eloquent models on our side. But obviously we need to make sure that the records that we're creating are correct. You know, we don't want to have records that are missing fields or they've got null set or that they, they have incorrect values or, you know, we've put surname in, in last name. And so where the actions come in real handy is that you can pass data into the action and then, um, you know, test the action in isolation to make sure that, you know, that, that piece of the puzzle works. And then, you know, if you have a scenario where you've got a bug or, or something's not being mapped correctly in, in that specific action, where you can go and write an action for that whole, for that, that single piece, rather than having to test the whole outside functionality as well. Um, so what, what I wanted to do, and this is going to be a really contrived example. I can't really take my, my, my work stuff and, and, and broadcast it, but we're going to take a, a really contrived kind of example, which is we're going to create a user. The, the user is going to, 
um, have an application created in, uh, have a, have a model created in, in the application, we're going to dispatch an event to say, um, you know, that they've signed up. We're going to maybe send something to mix panel. We're going to send an email to our marketing team to say, we've got a new user. We're going to send a welcome email to the user. And, and as I said, it's contrived. It's, um, it's the kind of thing that probably in practice you would realistically just all leave it in your controller or have some very small abstractions for that data where, um, you know, what we're going to look at, we're going to build that, we're going to write tests for it, and then we're going to refactor to, to using actions. And then we're going to look, if I have some time, I mean, I'm not really time, time bound, but people may not want to watch me program uh, and flounder for too long, is then take that, that flat structure in a, in a single controller action, like a store method we're going to look at. And then we're going to split that out into an action pipeline. And then if, if there's time, we're going to look at another, another thing that I've done, which is, which is taking a record and passing that between each of the actions. So, um, you know, we, we call that a traveler and, um, Jesse shut on the Zengle blog, um, they, they're a, a Laravel consultancy I've talked about this, where they have like this, this object, it's a package. Um, that, that actually we can look at here, I suppose. Um, where are they? GitHub.com Zangle. This one, it's called Zangle Pipeline. And it's, it's an abstraction that sits sort of on top of Laravel's underlying pipeline functionality. And it adds some nice things around it. Database transactions. It gives you an interface for response and exception handling. Um, and if we have a look at this, in uh i think it's in the test no source source examples um you know you've got this pipeline where you're taking um your your traveler class you're, you're setting some data on it you're running it through some pipes and then you can check you know did did this thing kind of work correctly um and and you know if not then you can handle the exception case as well and the traveler is just a popo so it's just a plain old php object um, that allows you to set some arbitrary information on it. Um, so the abstract traveler is there to, to kind of give you, um, some, some baseline functionality. So a status, a message, a string, um, setting the status, you know, all of this kind of stuff and the t determining whether that's passed or failed. And then, so from this abstraction, you can then create your own specific functionality. And that kind of gives you the best of both worlds. Um, but we'll, we'll see where we, where we land on all of that. We're, we're not going to use this package. Um, it, it's a, it's certainly a nice package and, and it, and it does the job, but I think this is going to be more around sort of looking at what, what we're trying to achieve. Um, before you ask, I'm using NVIM, NeoVim version 0 0.7. Um, it does act as a reasonably fully fledged, fully fledged IDE. Um, it does everything I need it to do. So. That's neither here nor there. And the theme that I'm using is Carbon. It is one that I created created myself, actually. Well, it's a port of a, a JetBrains theme. I don't know, did I call it Carbon.envim or something like that? I don't know. I'm not even signed in. Uh, all right. I don't know where it is. It's called Carbon. Anyway, if, if you wanted to do that. Um, how do I search repositories? You can tell I don't use GitHub. Car oh, Carbon.vim. There you go. Um, it, it is a part of uh, a part, a port of the carbon theme for Intel EJ. Um, and I'm using JetBrains Mono. So let's get that out of the way at the start. Um, cool. Let's get this underway. So the first thing we're going to want to do is kind of drive out the expectation here. Um, so if we, let's make a, a test. Um, just a user test, probably. This is all we need. Um, that's not a pass test. All right, pass. What do we need to do? We need to take this and we need to say use. Can you pass an array here? Use multiple. What's that? Um, t uh, refresh. Where is it? Refreshes, refresh database. I don't know what this thing is called. Uh, you can tell that I write PHP, uh, that I that I write Laravel a lot. Um, so uh, 
refresh. Da, da, da. Whatever. So it does work. Testing. Uh, refresh. Ah, oh, it's a trait. This works though, doesn't it? I don't know. Undefined constant, you reckon? Oh, yeah, it is class. Whatever. Anyway. Um, we don't need any of this. Pest doesn't need any of this stuff. You don't see my screen. That's all right. You, um, you wouldn't have seen, you would have, <laughs> I just showed you all of that stuff on GitHub and you were just looking at my face, which is amusing. Um, great. So here's the carbon theme here. Here's this pipeline thing, the Zengul pipeline. Um, all right, I'll quickly, quickly go back through this. Uh, so here's an example. This is what we're going to try and achieve, right? where we're going to pass some data through um, this example pipe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everything I said before is the same. It's just that now you've got some pictures. Um, thanks, uh, Gertian, for pointing that out. This would have been a terrible stream if you didn't actually see any of the video stuff. So, wonderful. All right. Uh, so, what do you want to do? It can register a new user, right? Right, so what happens? We, uh, we, this post, and this is always the thing that irritates me, whatever, just so we can get some completion. Um, we're going to post to users.store, I suppose, um, with a name. Email password uh, secret one two three because there's some rules password confirmation secret one two three um, and we're gonna want to see I suppose a cert created I don't know that's what we want that's what we need. Obviously, oop, that's not what I wanted at all. Can't, I can't see my keyboard. I have this uh, this boom arm down here, and uh, it's covering my hand. So, all right, we don't have a database, which is probably a problem. So, uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pop open our ENV, and we're just going to do this. Like I said, I did not prepare for this stream at all. Um, and then we're going to touch database, database, database. This this is um, our rules defaults. You know what? Uh, we want to do here. We want to do this, don't we? We need to use SQLite memory. So now our issue is going to be that there's no route users.store, which is correct. Um, routes. Hey, we're going to learn about test driven development while we're here, I suppose. Um, all right, let's leave that route post, uh, users, users controller store. Probably need to wrap that in a some square brackets of some description and we're calling that um, users.store, yeah. That's our next error, probably because that, that controller doesn't work. Look at that. Make controller. I'm going to use a lot of keyboard shortcuts um, and things like that. So, yep. I never remember. Do we, are we doing singular or plural? Let's just use that. And import that. And then go there.
<sighs> and I suppose we need to re-index and then we get what we need. Um, all right. So we've got our controller now. And now we'll get the next error, which is, you know, that this didn't do what we wanted to, right? We got a 500 because the store method doesn't exist, of course. Public function store takes the request. Um, right. It's a bit um, difficult doing this. Look, we wanted a 201. 201, we got a 200. So we're getting there. Um, and what are we doing? We're, we're creating. We're not, we're not doing any validation here. So we don't need to do that. We just want to make the test pass. Uh, so we're just going to do user create request only. Mm. We're going to need a hashed password, aren't we? And this is not going to hash the password automatically, is it? No, that's fine. Uh, is it name? Request input name. Email. Email. Hash make request input. Um, I, know, I guess we can just return that. That'll do. So Laravel will, will actually handle that return in such a way that because the model has just been created, it will uh, automatically return a 201 for us, which is nice. That way we don't have to don't have to worry about it. So if we run that now, look at that. It can register a new user. <coughs> Green. Green, 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 which is what we like to see. Um, hmm. All right. So, what else are we going to do when we when we register the new user? Do we do we need to create a profile for them? I guess we need to create a new profile for them. Um, so we could just uh, it creates a profile for a new user. All right. Let's just grab all of this because this is all the same, I suppose. Um, right. So we're going to get a user equals user first where email uh, expect user not to be null. Um, oh, you can do this, this fancy chaining, I suppose. Let's do that. Let's make full use of past um, profile. Same thing. Not to be null. All right. It doesn't work because we need to import this class. Oh. I press again. The wrong button. Expecting null not to be null. We don't have a profile. Who saw that one coming? So, uh, on our user model. Um, what do we want to do? We want to make a model. Make model. Is it dash A? Makes all the things? The migration. No, just, yeah, it'll do. Um, public function profile has one. This has one. Uh, profile plus. I need to import that because we're in the same. Has a factory, does it though? No, that's just default. Default, isn't it? I don't know. Let's create. Create. Uh, create 
profiles. Mm. Create profiles table. On your Nigel. Did you know that you can you can do this thing? This this thing you can if you if you put your migration name inside quotes, you can put spaces in there and Laravel will figure out all the rest for you. Which is really nice. Create profiles table. I don't care about any of this stuff. I definitely don't care about a down method. Table foreign ID four um user. I don't know. Let's just put a Twitter handle. Is that all we care about? Is that gonna be enough? We just want a Twitter handle. Um yeah, that'll be nullable. Mm-hmm. So if we jump back to our register user test. Uh, this will interestingly be null for some reason. Class user not found. Yeah. Okay. Um, probably because we would like to import the user model. Different error. What are you complaining about now? Table profiles already exist. Yeah. We don't need to have two of those. Hmm. We got this guy. All right, we're back to where we were starting from. Expects profile to not be null. Now, that is because, of course, we've got the relationship, but in our register user control, no, user controller. Uh, we don't do anything here. So rather than returning this, we want a user to equal that. Uh, we're going to return the user here so that if we go to our test, uh, this first test should still pass, right? And it does. This one is still no good. No bueno. And that is because uh, we just need to use a uh profile all right that'll probably do all right we just want it we just want it to be there yeah um so as part of this process you know we've got the we, we create the user we create their profile uh we don't we don't do anything else with it but we want to make sure that we uh notify marketing i guess is that it logs creation of user in Mixpanel. Now, we're not actually going to do that because we don't care. Um, like we're not, we're not going to integrate with Mixpanel in this scenario. We're going to just fake it. Uh, and we can do that using event fakes. Then fake, uh, and which event do we want to fake? User was created. Um, event cert dispatched. Mm, function user was created event use um oh yeah and what do we want to do in here my friends we want to ensure that event user no do we have to return here return event user is user uh, email Uh, yeah. So this syntax, in case you're not familiar, you can, instead of passing um, user was created, 
and then the function. Uh, this was added, I think, in like... Oh, what am I doing? Um, in like Laravel 8, where you can where you can pass just the closure and Laravel will resolve the this bit automatically for you. Um, typo. Unexpected. Unexpected what? Unexpected paren. Yeah, you probably don't need that there. Let's just run the test, even though we know it's going to fail because that class doesn't exist. The event. Well, the user was created event was not dispatched, was it? It was not. Because uh, we need to create it. Event. Make event. User was created. And now, user was created. Dispatch. There's um, some stuff. I've never really looked into it, to be honest. Um, where um, LSP doesn't doesn't uh, re-index when a file is created outside of of Vim. Um, there's probably a better way of doing it. Tim McDonald probably sent me on the right path at some stage. Now this is still going to fail. Uh, because because the property does not exist on the user, uh, on the event. The user property doesn't exist. So if we jump in here, uh, get rid of all of these yucky things that we don't care about in these dog blocks. Um, don't even need this because what we're going to do is we're going to say public user user. That's a PHP 8 thing where you can do constructor property promotion and it will take your constructor properties and it will turn them um, into instance properties. So if we run that test again, that works. So that's easy. But you can see... Um, You can see here that we're starting to, to kind of get out of hand in terms of like all of this stuff that we're doing in here and we're, we're kind of bundling it all up into, into the controller. And if we wanted to say now like, um, I don't know, I suppose that's an event, but you might want to, you know, welcome user. How do we, how do we notification? No, user notify. Welcome to actions. Is that how we do it? Is it? Do you have to pass it something like this? I don't know. Don't know how Laravel works. It's magic. I'll tell you that. Um, make notification. Welcome to actions. So we'll go back to our test, I suppose, if we're going to do this properly. Um, these all pass now, right? Oh. Oh. What happened? 500. Yeah, probably. Hmm. Because that, you know, doesn't exist. You can't dispatch a class that doesn't exist. You can't instantiate a class that doesn't exist, obviously. You all knew that. Um, it's there. So, it welcomes the user to our app function. Um, all right. Let's just, just, let's just put it all in here. Um, and instead of a event fake now, we want a notification fake. Insert sent to how this is this how this works?
Mm-hmm. Notifications. Using the notifiable trait. User notify. That's not what we want. Notification fake. About this one here. So it's sent to user. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess we need to fetch the user again. Do we do that anyway? We do. Uh, yep. So sent to user, uh, what was it? Welcome to actions class. Um, we really need to figure out how to make that re-index, I guess. Ah, mail is the default. How wonderful. All right, we don't really care about any of this stuff, do we? Because we're not actually going to be sending an email. Anyway, this will fail because we're not actually doing anything yet. Notification is not sent, of course. Um, yeah. Import that. On the, again, look at that. Um, yeah, so I suppose this is this is where I was coming at, right? So we've got a whole bunch of actions. As I said at the at the start of the stream, it's it, it's a horribly uselessly contrived example, but this is the kind of thing that we're trying to kind of isolate and test and and sort of make sure that that we can break it up. Um, and so what we'll probably start to do now is we'll start refactoring this to to the the actions and and start looking at what. Um, you know, what, what that means for our application. Uh, we're at about 30 minutes now, so that's, that's tracking okay, I suppose. So all of, all of these tests, when, when we're finished, will continue to pass. We're not going to have to change any of the tests at all um, because we're just going to sort of shift some stuff around. Um, the, the refactor part of the red-green refactor cycle. So, you know, we've got all of this stuff out of the way now. Um. So how do we want to do this? We probably want, we're going to do this in two steps. The first is going to be, um, the first is going to be, we're just going to leave the user here, right? And then, um, and then we'll look if we've got time at the, at the traveler. So the, the pipeline stuff is fairly, and Look, we've got three lines of code in here. You probably wouldn't refactor this scenario. Um, we're, we're doing like heaps and heaps of stuff with ours. So it makes more sense in that context. But um, oh, we've used facades. So let's just keep using facades, I guess. Uh, make um, pipeline. Uh, the pipeline, the pipeline, not the routing pipeline and not the contract pipeline. That's no good to you. You want this one. And then we want to send, what are we going to send? We're going to send the user. We're going to send the user through um, create user profile. Mm -hmm. Create user profile. Then we're going to Add to mix panel, and then we're going to welcome user class, then return. Now, so there's two ways of doing this. You can do like then, which takes a a callback of your of your traveler thing you want it, and then you can do like something else to it in here, and then return it. Um. If you don't, as in our scenario, need to do anything with it, 
um, you can just return. And what that is going to do is that will return this user, which means we can just do this. Um, and then that first test will continue to pass. Now, obviously this is gonna be a horrible mess and it's not gonna pass because um, none of none of those, those classes exist, right? Scrolling, I don't normally use flow term for my test output. Um, it just makes more sense in the constrained space of the stream. But then of course you've got to, with giant text, scroll up forever until we get to where we need to be to see what the actual error is. But this is going to tell us that, uh, yeah, this create user profile class doesn't exist. So um, <clears throat> what we're going to do, we're going to, mm, we're going to create a new class and we're going to put it in, not app HTTP controllers, we're going to put it in app actions, create user profile. Uh, and what we want is just an invocable, right? Invoke, uh, this will take our user that we're passing. Um, and a callable. And so create user profile is just going to user profile. Uh, well, actually, we just need to create these classes for now to make that test pass again. So create user profile. Um, what do we have here? Add to mix panel. Add to mix panel. Now th these are just like plain PHP objects. They don't, they're not fancy in any way, shape or form. Um, so yeah, that's that. They're just, let, let me just type all this out so we can get that test pass, the, the first test passing again and we'll go from there. Uh, and what was it? Welcome. Hmm. Welcome user. My memory's not very good. I can't remember between looking at the controller and typing in here. Welcome user. Right, same thing. Uh, public. Uh, let's under that. It's just like if we go back. Right, right. right. Go back here. Um, I don't want the test, I guess. I want the controller, don't I? User control. Because this is where, so we're, we're just doing this bit here. Uh, we're gonna return here and all of this stuff, like we're just gonna pretend doesn't exist. And then this pipeline is just gonna return the user. So this test should, but does not. Oh, I suppose we need to import all of those, don't we? Import, import, import. See how that beautifully that works when I create create the class inside of um, Vim. Still doesn't pass. Well, I hope you're not planning on learning anything from me. Received a 201. Is this actually the user? It is not a user. Interesting. Very interesting. We'll figure that out later, I suppose. Doesn't matter. Whatever. Fine. Turn user. Look, 
See? Told you I know what I'm doing. Um, so this test passes, no problem. This one's going to fail now because we're returning before any of that functionality happens, right? So we return here now. Um, so we want to jump in here. And we want to do this. And then we want to return next user. And so what this does is it's the same as in your middleware's handle methods where it will take the the request and you can kind of pass it through it's, it's the exact same like this is the the class that that basically powers how middleware functions so um so what we did do that that one passes now um and then you know this one's going to fail because we're not doing that thing so we're going to take this dispatch and we're going to go add to next panel um and then oh that doesn't work because you have to import the class Mm -hmm. That's why we have tests, because then it'll tell us what we've done wrong. And then that one doesn't work because, you know, we're returning before we do this. Um, so we can go here and we can just say, do that. And then let's remember to import the class. And then do we run this test? No, yes, maybe. Oh, hello. This one's failing. Interesting. Why are you yelling at me? You welcome to actions. Uh huh. Because. This is why. This is why you need to return. Because if you don't return, then it still doesn't work. Uh, we've got 500. User must be a type. App actions user. Yeah. I knew that. Because, 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 because. This is what happens when you copy and paste. Mm -hmm. um, when you copy and paste, it doesn't copy and paste the imports, obviously. So, uh, so we go back to our controller and we can get rid of this duplication, obviously. And so we, we've not reduced any lines of code. And as I said, this is really a horribly bad example of, of what we're trying to achieve. Um, but all of our tests continue to pass now, so we're happy there. Um, where, this, where this becomes useful, though, is when you start being able to test these individual classes when they're doing complicated logic. As I said, when when there's an error in some piece of functionality, you know, if the user profile was created with some missing field or if adding to mix panel didn't send the plan across, like you could create a test for that failing scenario and then make it make it pass. Um, so that's where, where that kind of becomes really useful. Um. Oh, we probably don't need this anymore, seeing as that didn't work. Um, those tests will continue to pass now anyway. So, but this this still requires us um, to to kind of couple our controller with couple. I mean, yeah, as I said, in practice, you would probably just leave this alone. But um, we're coupling the you know the model creation to to the request to the controller, all that kind of stuff, which like. In this scenario, it probably doesn't matter too much. But what we want to do, see, so we're sending the user through, which is already the the user model. But if you if you were to pass the request through here, that works well for this scenario. Um, but then, when you get to this class, you're not going to get the user. You're going to you're going to still get the request. Like this will be, you know, request. Um, <clears throat> now, you might be thinking, you might be thinking, okay, well, instead of returning next user here, you could, um, you know, instead of next request, you could create the user equals blah, and then 
But the the issue with that, which may or may not be an issue in practice, is that you may want to change the order of these. Um, and when you start saying that like this one is going to return a user, but a, a different class is going to return something else and a different class is, you know, you, you then become kind of tied in the order of, of those operations. Now, sometimes it's it's going to be significant anyway. For us, we have to create the application, then we have to create the applicants, then we have to create the addresses so that we can, you know, link them back. So that there's there's an order to it. But if your actions are kind of singularly focused and they don't have too much dependence on anything else other than it existing, um, then then it probably doesn't matter too much. But where it's also useful is that you don't have to keep requerying the database. You know, if things get out of sync, if you if you go from like request to user to to profile to to user, like you've got to get the the user back in all of those instances. So you have to keep hitting your database to get that, and so that you know gets the efficiency of the of the calls and the and and the requests a little bit out of whack. Um, so this is where that the the notion of that traveler comes in, where you've got. Um, you know, this abstract traveler that that this is the thing that that goes through each of your pipeline classes or your actions. And then it it has some base level of functionality. Um and and you can add on whatever you want for specific scenarios. So what we will do, and, and the traveler is important because that then allows you to discreetly test your actions because you can you can instantiate a traveler and pass the traveler into an action class to test a single action class. Whereas this gets a bit funny because you've got to like new up the request and pass the request backwards and forwards and things like that. So um, let's uh, let's just close that for now. Um, let's just call traveler. Now there's there's some gotchas here that that you need to to be aware of. Um, and I bumped on them so you don't have to really. Um, so we're just going to say this is an abstract class traveler. Um, the abstract class is going to be responsible for the invoke. But we're going to do this. Um, sorry, we can have an abstract action. We'll get there. The traveler is just, you know, your thing. Um, in this instance, like, there's not really anything that we're going to have to worry about it. Um, you know, we could call this a, a user traveler. Um, but because we're not, you know, we don't have all of this stuff in terms of exception and, and messages and things like that, we don't need to worry too much about it. Um, but the the traveler kind of allows us to encapsulate something that needs to pass through. So, you know, where I said that you would have the request that becomes a user that becomes the the profile that becomes the user again. You could have here like um, a, a public function set user, which accepts a user and returns um, the class again. And we just say this user equals user, return this. Um, and then we just say, all right, protected user. All right, whatever. Now, obviously, this is coupled to our application. In in reality, you would have separate, separate term. I mean, it may be that every traveler is always going to have a user attached to it or always going to have the ability to have a, a user attached to it. So, um, now that we have that, if we go back here, What we can do is we can actually extract this. Because this now no longer has to be here. We can just have a new traveler which takes the request, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, public function construct uh, 
I protect it. Sure, that's probably fine. Uh, what is that? It's illuminate HTTP requests, I guess. And we'll just say protected. Request, request. Right. Don't need to do that, do we? Because, yeah. Let's get that back. Right. So now create user and this is where we start to get a little bit more interesting i think um so we create a new action now create user function invoke uh now this is going to accept a traveler We need the user, we need the hash. Um, these instances of request will now be this request because they're, uh, whoops, not this. Um, traveler, let's say get request and make it a method call. Do you want it to be a method call? Let's just let's just do that. Let's just say it's request, and then we can put a function here that says public function request returns request and returns this request, not returns return. Now this is important because this is a, a protected property. You probably, I mean, you could you could. Make this public. It probably doesn't matter too much. Um, you you could just like use the request helper. Um, it's it's fine, really. Um, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, so now we're gonna we're gonna jump back to our test, and we'll just go back to the first one. This is this is going to fail, right? Of course, because we've like we're not creating the user anymore, and we're like gracious. Um, Uh, someone did this. I just noticed. Is it Tim or Jess? One of those wonderful Australians made it so that the actual exception gets shoved here. Um, you cannot instantiate an abstract class. Yeah, of course you can't. Um, let's just not make it abstract. Uh, for the purposes of this, right? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, right, so now this create user doesn't exist because we haven't imported it. So if we go back to our uh, controller, create user, well, let's get rid of this and all of these things we're not using now, I suppose. So so now we've got like this traveler is responsible for, for actually going all the way through. Um, so now each of our actions uh, that one is okay. Uh, we probably need to return next traveler. Right. Um, and if we were to run that, what have we done wrong here? Right. So th this is now failing because we're no longer passing the user. Well, actually, let's 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 talk about this. We could we could do that. Um, Could we? My variable user. We're just the user test. Yeah, okay. Um that. Um traveler requesting for yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, what was there? Did I leave it on the screen long enough? You're all behind the stream anyway. Right. Okay, so this is what we'll do. You're in the traveler. 
And we're going to say, we've got set user, but we also want to get user, um, which will maybe return a user. Should probably update this because otherwise PHP will get upset if you ever called get user before you had created the user. Um, you say then return get user. Um, you should probably say it's 200, not a 201. Oh, it's 500 again. I'm not all, oh. Call to undefined method get user. Right, because we're only passing the traveler in to create user. Um, this is still user all the way through. So this would actually already be the user. Right. Cooking with gas. So this is this is passing. But what's happening here is we're passing the user onto the next thing. And as I said, that's kind of coupling us to the specific um, sequence for our for our action pipeline, which we don't want to do. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this to traveler set user. Um, and then we're just going to return the traveler. Now, this will fail because... Uh, this is now expecting a user and it's getting a traveler instance, which is easily fixed by going in here. Right? We're following along. Now you'll see that this is quite repetitive and we're going to address this shortly because I think we're doing okay for time. Um, but this is, there's a little bit of magic that we can employ uh, to kind of like, you know, so we don't have to do um, all of this. Well, it's not really magic. Um, but we'll get there. Stay with me. I promise it'll make sense shortly. <laughs> um, so this becomes Traveler. This becomes Traveler get user, traveler. Um, wow, why don't I use the powers of my IDE? Yep, rename that, traveler, boom. Um, that becomes that. And then this can still return, but now because we're passing the traveler all the way through, we end up with this. Um, if we go back to our, we're just the user test. I have demonstrated once again that I don't know how to program. Undefined property, get user. Mm -hmm. One of these, I have made a mistake where I have not used the method call, like here. Look at that. Um, all of those tests pass. So I call that a successful refactor. So you can see here that we've got like, we've passed, we've passed the request into the traveler. And then for each of these actions, we've passed the traveler that we've, you know, we're sending the traveler through create user, through create user profile, through add to mix panel, through welcome user. We will return the traveler instance, right? Traveler. And then we call get user on that, um, which we defined on this traveler class down here. So uh, the next thing we'll look at, let's worry up the time. We're just on an hour. We'll do this quickly. This, this, and this will be the last thing. Um, there, there's this repetition, right? 
uh, you need to, you know, do something and then you need to call next. And then, you know, every time you've got to do this and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, add to mix panel, same thing. Create user profile, right? Now, if this was the extent of our application, you could leave it, it would be fine. It's not the end of the world. Um, but we can abstract this in such a way that it kind of just tidies things up a little bit. So what we're going to do here, we'll just create a, create a new class called action. Because why not? We're going to make this one abstract. We're going to say, now there is a gotcha here. Laravel will look by default for a method called handle. If we look in the pipeline.php class method, default is method, right? Now, the problem with this is if the method exists, Laravel will call that method directly. Otherwise, it will invoke it. Um, if you want to do anything with your class constructor or whatever else, then you will need to, to deal with that. Um, actually in this scenario, it's probably fine to be honest. Um, the, the reason I say we're not going to do this, um, is you, you still have that duplication. Like you still need, you, you'll still receive, um, the traveler and the callable, um, and you will still need to return from there. And that, that kind of defeats the purpose of what we're trying to achieve. Um, because what we're going to do is, is to remove that duplication. So I think the, the Laravel actions package, Laravel, is it actions.com? Or is it just one word? They, they do this kind of thing with, I think they have like a run method or, a, or an execute method or something like that. Um, does it show in here? They have handle, but they're, they're not. So th this is, and this is why I haven't used this package is this doesn't allow for, for pipelines of passing from A to B to C through like with, with, with that same scenario. This allows you to reuse the action classes in different places. You know, you can use it as, um, as a controller, as a job, as an event listener, as a command. And, and that's really good for code reuse. Um, and you could probably use a combination of that with, with this functionality. Um, so, so using a, a different method, we're going to, we're going to use execute means that, um, because it's defined as a, as an abstract, anything that, that extends from this action class has to use it. And then we can implement the, the invoke method, right? Uh, like so, where we call, um, this execute. And then we return next um, traveler. Okay, so this this then means that in in these individual classes, um, we can get rid of this, and so all of our methods just reduce to this um, extends action. Um, um, this, right. Uh, um, let's pass it. Let's just pass it to the execute method. Whatever. Let's, let's be happy. The, the way that I had done this at work is that I had like a, a constructor. So this does like a, a static make um, like this kind of thing. Um, and that, that just makes this available as an instance property. Uh, so you, you would still get this. You would have like a, a protected traveler, traveler. Um,
and then and then that allows uh, this kind of thing where you've got um, actually here's something cool public function underscore underscore call um, name is it dot 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 arguments it's just name um, and then you can do this this kind of trippy stuff where you go like um, if method method exists this is it that order method exists object yeah method this um traveler name too many then you can do return this oi bay right um this gets a bit funny i don't think um, you know, Vim's LSP supports that correctly. But what that's going to do is that will that'll automatically... Oh, it does do it. Well, there you go. No, I didn't complain about it at least. It doesn't give me completion, but it doesn't complain about it. Um, so that's going to that's gonna be the same as doing this. Um, you know, 6 one half and the other. It's just a nice little... Hello, Bushan. Um, it, it's just a nice little shortcut... Um, and you know, we're in Laravel, we all like little shortcuts. So execute, uh, do that. We can, we can, again, we can just do this, um, this, 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 get rid of that. Right. You see how you just tidy this up and, and, uh, and, and, and remove that sort of duplication extends action. Uh, we're not using this now. Um, and it and it kind of just makes things just a, that little bit cleaner in terms of um, execute. Look, if I knew how to, um, and then you can again this get rid of that, right? And it and it just keeps these these individual action classes really lightweight and and really focused on what they're actually trying to achieve. Um, yeah, so this is going to complain because it doesn't think, ah, uh, because we need to action. Right. And so if we go back to our register user test, it doesn't work because, uh, you know, as we've learned, I don't know what I'm doing. Traveler must not be accessed before initialization. Who's accessing Traveler before initialization? It's a bit naughty. Um, oh, I think that's because of the, the call thing. Yeah, because it does that. Um, no problem. What do you mean? I thought that was a good hack. This does work. I've made it work. Oh, do you know why? I'll tell you why. This is why. I have no constructor. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't even need that now. All right, mate. Just private. Don't. Minutes. Arguments. Turn self. Yes. Um... New static. Right. Oh my word. Do I know how to program or what? Create user is not instantiable. Who's trying to instantiate it? Stop it. 
Oh, maybe I should have stopped at an hour. This was good. Map actions is not instantiable. Map actions is not instantiable. Map actions create user is not instantiable. Extends action. Maybe this has to be public. Whatever. Set user zero pass one required. Really? Rocky Road got there in the end. You all knew we could do it. I believed in you. Hello, Ted Nugent. Sorry, I did not see you earlier. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, normally, I have this in like a, a trait, um, you know, just as a, in my application. I think Laravel Nova ships well on as well. Uh, and it's just like, a, let's put it over here. Concerns uh, make a ball. I'll just throw it in here. It just does that. Um, Yeah, that goes there. And then this is just use make a ball. What do you mean? And that, that all, all sort of keeps going. Um, so, you know, this is, as I said, it's a, it's a very contrived example doing this thing, the, the way that we've done it. Um, but I'm I'm kind of hoping that that at least sort of gets you in into the the, the mindset um, of 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 what you can achieve here, and and you can imagine that when you've got sort of like eight or ten or twenty or or whatever different pieces of functionality, like you can dispatch um, methods, uh, or, or you know you can dispatch events, or you can throw things on a queue or whatever it is that you feel like doing in that regard. But I, I I tend to find events that are like that have side effects to be a little bit counterproductive in that they 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 it's not clear in your application flow, you know what's happening where you dispatch an event and you've got to go and look at your event subscriber and then you've got to go and find like the individual classes whereas this is very um, clear and concise you know here that each of these things are happening and you know exactly what's happening in each of those things. Um, except for this one, like we're just dispatching an event here. This, this would probably make your actual request to, to mix panel in, in practice. Um, there's, there's probably some work to be done in terms of being able to make these things queuable, you know, um, this, this is certainly clear what is happening and what the steps are. Um, and, and then, as I said, now that we've got this, we can sort of like, um, make test, is it test test pass? Um, and then you can do like, we don't really have anything useful to test, honestly. Um, create user profile uh, test. Like you can do this. And now you've got a test, um, you know, it. it's kind of tricky because we're trying to, to pass a, a, re a request object into the traveler in this instance. Um, but you, you can like, uh, new, have a traveler here. Um, can you like create, create, there you go. Create from, can I just pass it? Hmm. Probably a bad example, really. Um, but you you can, I don't know. I just want to create a fake request object, right? Is it possible how to how to how to make request object? Is basically what I'm trying to get at here. Um, new request. Can can I do it this way? What does this accept as parameters?
Does it have a constructor? Capture instance method root constructs. Hmm. This, it doesn't have its own. It's a bit. I guess the constructor is here then. What? The symphony one doesn't even have one. How does one construct? Anyway, what 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 I'm getting at, this is gonna to go too too far down the, the rabbit hole. Um let's just pretend you can do this, right? Um bizarro at michael.com or something like that, password. Of course I've stopped. I'm obviously knowing what I'm doing. That's all right, I was just bubbling around. Um the, the the idea being that you can do something like this and then you can uh what do we mean? create user make um traveler right because this will um hit our make method it'll uh and then you you can call uh what do you call it we call it execute, right? And then you can, you know, uh, expect user uh, first where uh, email bizarro at michael.com to exist, not to be null, run out of space there, whatever. So, you know, you can do these kinds of isolated assertions and, and it comes down to like the isolated testing of of these individual actions. Um, I, I don't think this will work, but I think that that kind of gives you the, yeah, because you can't, you can't create a request that way. Um, Anyway, so, you know, what what we're kind of getting to is this scenario where, you know, you can discreetly test the actions themselves to make sure that the actions work. Um, another another nice place that I've seen this used, just, just to wrap this up, um, is in the Vapor CLI. Is it the Vapor CLI? There's no closing square bracket in Vapor CLI. Um, if you have a look in here at the uh the not the build process but the build command this is a nice place to kind of source dive and this this goes through all of the individual build process actions um, and this does it much much simply it's just using a, a collect a collection it's iterating through each of them and then invoke you know running the invoke method on each of these these classes um this doesn't work in in mo in the scenario that we just went through because we're trying to pass the user through each of them. So this is just saying like, do this, do this, do this. This is just a series of steps that have to happen one after the other. Um, and and you can just pass, you know, the environment in, in this, in this scenario. Um, and each of these things are um, handled. Let's have a look at this method called, uh, or this class called harmonizing configuration files. So, you know, this just does some stuff. It spits some output to the screen. Um, it iterates over your config files. It replaces any environment variables um, using this functionality here. Um, but it does all, all of these kinds of things. So it's a it's a nice pattern um, for for certain scenarios where, you know, as as you saw with the the build process, um, there's you know like twenty different actions that need to take place. So. Hope hope that is of use to someone. There is. I've just noticed on my my light is is causing a wave across my face, which is interesting. Um, so yeah, I hope hope that kind of explains a little bit about actions. Um, and it kind of helps you, you know, maybe see some situations in your own code where where you can make use of them. Um, definitely check out this Laravel Actions package. Uh, from uh, Loris, Loris Lever, I think his name is. 
um, it's it, it it seems like a, a very robust sort of solution, especially in that scenario where it's oh Adrian, Adrian, you get me excited. Let's have a look because if we can actually make this this thing work. Make, make request make you reckon request make okay call static make request make doesn't exist is it on the request facade maybe request hmm it's a shame No matter. Um, yeah, as I was saying, I hope uh, I hope that that you know is is of use to to people. There are there are situations where it, where it's really useful. Um, like I said, with with this um, this build command, it's it's quite nice in terms of um, you know I've got a whole bunch of things that need to happen. I don't want to have like one. You know, this command could have what's that, sixty-nine to eighty-nine, twenty, twenty different protected methods. You could like hide it away in traits um, and and all that kind of stuff. Doing it this way kind of makes it much nicer, much easier to 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 see. You know, these are the steps that put everything together for me. Um, and then I don't I don't actually know if yeah, it doesn't um doesn't have any tests for for that for that process, but. Um, being able to test those things in isolation, like I said at, at the start of the stream, if you want to go back and, and have a listen, we kind of we get this this package that is you know potentially thousands of lines of JSON, and being able to say, okay, I need to given given the package, I need to make sure that I'm creating the applicant record correctly. I don't I don't want to test the whole thing. I just want to know that very specifically the applicant works, so I can say like here is the package, um, create a new traveler with that package then take the the traveler pass it into the action that is responsible for creating applicants and then that then I can test that that functionality so I can say you know that the name first in the the incoming data translates to first underscore name in our database and things like that and make assertions against that and then as as requirements change and we need to introduce new functionality you know when you create an applicant it also needs to then relate that applicant back to the application I can write that test discreetly um, and then test against just that action, knowing that in the wider thing, I can just do a count. Um, so definitely, definitely check that out if it's, if, you know, it's an approach that that is useful too. Um, it, it's not an approach for everyone in every situation. Um, there are a, a number of different approaches that you can take when you're refactoring your uh, controllers. You can use services, you can use events, you can use jobs and, and things like that. I will put a link in in the the YouTube description that that goes through that stuff that um, Pavilis wrote about on the Laravel News website a few weeks ago. But that's that's it from me. Um, it was fun to 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 spend an hour and a half going through with this stuff for you. Um, didn't really have a plan or anything like that. So um, hope you all all have a good weekend. Um, stay safe, stay warm where you are, stay cool where you are, depending on on the season. And uh, until next time, cheers.